OU geography professor Dr. Gary Thompson recently completed a study of Oklahoma's prison system. He discovered that a large percentage of the state's population consisted of males between the ages of 18 and 24. Dr. Thompson said those young people are more likely to commit crimes than people in other age groups. The geographer predicted the state prison population would gradually decrease as the baby boom young people grow older. My judgment is that we will not see the present rate of increase in our prison population due to, to several factors. Number one, the baby boom period and the in-migration have ended. Uh, number two, it's very difficult to imagine that we're going to continue to increase our number of arrests, uh, our number of uh, felony charges, our number of sentences uh, uh, at the same rate that we've been increasing. In other courtroom action, Corrections Department Health Administrator Darlene Lamascus testified that the state had supplied the court fact finder with bum information about the number of inmates taking tranquilizers. The fact finder had said 23 percent of state convicts were taking powerful drugs in prison. Lamascus said the actual number was closer to 7 percent. This time, og and &E is seeking an $87.4 million increase. According to company officials, the move is designed to offset the construction cost of the Muskogee 6 power plant. We have roughly $200 million invested in the plant at this time, and uh, I think the issue in the case is we need to start earning on the investment we've got in that plant. But lawyers with the Attorney General's office disagree with the request saying the company is strong enough to support construction funding without additional charges to the public. On return on equity, on construction work in progress, and on cash working capital, the three items that we looked at, we come out saying that this company is doing just fine, and it really is not entitled to a rate increase at this time. If the request is approved by the commission, customers will see a 15 percent increase in their monthly electric bills. Kevin Ogle, Action 4. We think this is a realistic request. We really do. And uh, we hope that the legislative leaders and uh, Governor and I uh, will uh, provide the leadership as we are in a position or get in a position to fund higher education and other state agencies. Well, he would just get mad at me for the silliest things and, and just literally just beat me up with his fist, you know, just over stupid, light, little things that just didn't really matter. It's an all too common problem. It happens every 30 seconds in this country, wife beating. In Oklahoma City, there is a solution or at least a way to cope. It's called crisis intervention offered through the YWCA. In addition to a shelter for battered women, there's a weekly group that meets to discuss the problem and help this growing number of women reshape their lives. There's first just the physical safety that they're safe, maybe for the first time in a long time, and that gives them a chance to, to begin to feel emotionally secure and to feel better emotionally about themselves, to build their self-esteem. Self-esteem is an important word as it relates to wife beating. Most battered women have lost their self-esteem. The realization that others are suffering from the same problem and the discovery that there are people to talk to are the keys in rebuilding self-esteem and helping these women get back on their feet. For the first time, these women hear objective views and they receive advice. Don't go back. Um, it won't change. Uh, maybe that's kind of just dealing in my situation, but basically there's a pattern in men who batter their wives do not change.
Corrections Director Larry Meacham took the stand first. He praised Judge Bohannon for much of the progress in Oklahoma's prisons. Meacham told the judge, I'd hate to think how far we'd come without this court. The corrections director then assured the judge that state prisons are constitutional. And then he asked Judge Bohannon to give up his 10-year-old oversight of Oklahoma's prisons. Later in the day, Governor George Nye echoed Meacham's suggestion. Nye told the judge Oklahoma has spent $410 million on its prisons since he's been governor. The governor testified that during lean economic times, other state agencies tightened their budget belts while the corrections department grew fatter. I was, trying, I was trying very strongly to talk him into relinquishing of control. In my opinion, when you've done as much as the state has done, the reward should be that he would say, you've done good, now go run it. I think that's what I want the judge to see. We have, we have tried our best and uh, we, we've made progress, but the people and the government want to run their own prison. It's almost absurd. The problems we've seen here are deep and serious. And to suggest that the, the court should walk out of the case in the, in the light of these problems, it, it's just not productive. It, it's not a way to find the solutions. It only gets us deeper into the problems. The mid-evening fire at the West Side Center quickly developed into a two-alarm tinderbox. The blaze began in a two-story building that was under construction behind the office complex. As the fire grew in intensity, it spread to the attic of the adjoining building. Through a pall of smoke, firemen fought to contain the flames until the fire could burn itself down. The smoke has been horrible. The heat has been very bad. It's been driving the firefighters out of the building for uh, the close to two hours that they've been here. Uh, they had uh, physical problems in, in locating the fire because it was hidden and concealed in the cockloft of the building, and, and the fire laid up in that cockloft and smoldered a long time. And... Even with third alarm crews on the scene, firemen worked over two hours to bring matters under control. Investigators don't know the cause of the fire, but they do estimate the damage to the two buildings in excess of a quarter of a million dollars. The wooden frame structure is a total loss and damage to the office complex is extensive. A routine investigation will begin when what's left of this property finally quits smoldering. From Southwest 43rd and May Avenue, Tony Stizza, Action 4. Overcrowding and prisoner unrest have prompted Oklahoma County officials to begin a new program designed to ease correction problems in the county jail. It's called the Community Service Sentencing Program, scheduled to get underway in November. Some nonviolent offenders, after careful screening by correction officials, will be allowed to work their sentences off while living at home. By cleaning up parks and providing other city services, a form of restitution is involved. And according to county officials, a potential problem at the county jail will be alleviated. What we have never had up until now is anybody supervise these people if we put them out on community service. We haven't had anybody to supervise them. So we couldn't just turn them loose on the public. We don't have the time to go out and supervise them. So the Department of Corrections is going to supervise these people working instead of supervising them in a penitentiary. Cannon wants to make it clear there are plenty of people in the county jail who belong there and who need to stay there. The judge feels by reducing the number of nonviolent offenders, the county could save up to a half a million dollars a year and at the same time provide a long overdue service. That is not fair, Kevin Ogle, Action 4.
track as they come to also Pepper Hill. Is the number five Rovers Adventure. <laughs> People care about children because they, they can't go out and do things for themselves, whether you and I, we have a little more resources as adults. And people really care. Oklahomans care for children. And this is their Oklahoma Children's Hospital, whether you be from way out in the Panhandle or right here in Oklahoma City. This A report released last week by the Commission on Children and Youth criticized this Northwest Oklahoma City Children's Home for the care it was giving the 55 children housed here. Among the report's findings were children described as skin and bones, children whose teeth appeared not to have been brushed, and a lack of social activity. Stunned by the blistering report, the people who run the home answered back today. They called in some of the parents who have children here, and those parents say the report is inaccurate and biased. They don't know anything about the kids. They need to come out. If they want to know about these kids, they need to come out here and work. Either that or have one of their own to find out what it's really all about out here. If they were, you know, hurting them or doing that or not feeding them, um, the parents out here wouldn't be here today to, you know, to talk to you and everything because I don't think they would, you know, hurt the children. They keep them clean. It's always clean out here. Most of the children at this DHS-funded home are retarded, handicapped, or both. Administrators here say they believe the commission members who visited the home may not have had the medical expertise to accurately assess the care here. And in fact, DHS Director Robert Fulton has backed the home. But still, the home's administrator is at a loss to explain why the report was so critical. I really don't know. I have no idea. I, I know that the person that wrote the report was not a, a doctor or a nurse. And I don't really know uh, why they would say those things. Jeff Fowler, Action 4 in Northwest Oklahoma City. Oklahoma bankers are calling the government's latest deregulation effort a non-event. Uncle Sam will no longer tell banks and savings and loans how much interest they may pay on anything but traditional passbook savings accounts. Financial lenders say the big event happened last fall when the government allowed banks and savings and loans to compete head to head with money market mutual funds. The money market fund accounts came out in December and the, the super now account as they call it came out in January. <clears throat> that was an entirely different situation. At that time, the financial institutions were in competition with the money market funds. And what everybody was trying to do was to pull money from the money market funds. And in this situation, the only thing would really happen is, is the money would change from one financial institution to another. It may be that, uh, that a bank or an SNL might elect to pay a premium rate on a short-term basis to attract new deposits. If they do that, in all likelihood, it'll be very short-term in nature. They'll pay that premium to attract the deposits, after which they'll, they'll back down to a, a true market rate. Financial deregulation is scheduled to be complete in 1985, when the government lifts its limit on how much interest lenders can pay on passbook savings accounts. Scott Wallace, Action 4. At first glance, it appeared that local newscasters were waiting tables tonight for a few extra bucks. Well, they were, and the tips have been great. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jim. Happy birthday to you. Whether delivering a birthday cake or serving up Joe Kelly's specialty of the house, Linda Cavanaugh and Jerry Adams, along with other TV and radio personalities, we're busy waiting tables tonight for the hospitality house. No dishes were broken, and believe it or not, not a drop was spilled. And on top of it all, a lot of money was raised for a very worthy cause. At Joe Kelly's, Kurt Autry, Action 4.
Today's dedication was more than just a ribbon cutting. It was a true celebration of dedication from the hospital staff and the Oklahoma City community. Together, they raised three quarters of a million dollars to make an already good burn center a top-notch center. The money went primarily to doubling bed space and improving equipment quality. Not long ago, this was a storage area. Now it's a whole new wing for patient rehabilitation with 17 new beds. There's also two tank rooms now, that is two rooms used for those all-important cleansing treatments. For burn patients, that means less time waiting and thanks to new equipment, probably less pain. Car washes or tubs with gentle sprayers have been added, as well as a new tank that moves itself instead of the patient having to move. The list of new additions at the Baptist Burn Center goes on and on, all thanks to people who truly care about others. This burn center not only has been put together through individual contribution, as Mr. Bond says, it's caring and sharing of the people in Oklahoma, uh, the people who can afford to give the money, to donate the money to be used in the care of people they'll never see, is I think a very important attribute of the Southwestern person. Burn patients have a better chance for a brighter future today, thanks to the generosity and hard work of our community and the professional dedication found at the Baptist Burn Center. Sherry Sellers, Action 4 at the Baptist Burn Center. She told the whole world she was going to do that because women are usually sneaky about that. <laughs> and then they come back and say, how do I... The fellow lives right next door to me. He just had a new pacemaker put in. It's the most wonderful thing in the world. And he feels so damn good. Of course, every time he makes love, my garage door opens, but it doesn't... <laughs> and, it and it affects my television, too. When he changes channels, I have to. <laughs> no, but they are doing marvelous things. Jackie Gleason had his face lifted, and I thought that was... Presbyterian Hospital's new eye surgery wing has been treating patients for several months now. Since February, people have been coming to the hospital within a hospital to have their cataracts repaired by skilled surgeons who have the latest lasers at their fingertips. The only thing the eye center did not have was a formal name. Mr. Bob Hope. That changed today when Bob Hope dedicated the one and a half million dollar facility which bears his name. The 80 year old entertainer has taken a personal interest in vision research. He has had eye problems in the past. This country Those troubles been, are now a source of had, Hope's uh, humor. I had a problem last year. I went to about November. It happened because I went to see a picture that uh, Bo Derrick was in called Tarzan. And she came out in her birthday suit, and my right eyeball went right up to the screen. <laughs> and they scraped it off, and they took me to the New York hospital, and they were very nice there. They gave me all the examinations and uh, took my blood, till it took enough blood till they got down to the prune juice. Bob Hope gave his time and name to raise money for the eye center. Grateful Oklahomans gave the comedian a gaggle of gifts, including a quarter horse named Pete. Hope turned around and donated Pete to an Edmonds stable which provides writing therapy for retarded children. Bob Hope may have had problems with his eyes, but he's never had trouble with his heart. Scott Wallace, Action 4 at Presbyterian Hospital. The 
the blaze apparently started in a trash bin at the Kermagee building on the 17th floor. Firefighters suspect a smoldering cigarette ignited the paper in the bin. The fire was confined to a suite of offices and a mail room on the 17th floor. It was extinguished quickly after firefighters climbed the 17 flights of stairs. For a time, though, officials were worried that the fire may have spread to other parts of the building. The smoke was simply everywhere and was coming out different vents in the building. And standing outside, it really appears as if the, the entire building is on fire. Uh, uh, firefighters worked for about an hour uh, traversing the entire building, opening every door, looking under every piece of carpet to make sure the fire had not spread, and, and in an hour from now, break out on the 30th floor. And that's a very time-consuming process, but, and, and one of the things that's done as soon as the fire is apparently under control. Fire officials are still investigating the cause of the fire today. There are no damage estimates available yet, but it is believed that much of the building will sustain some form of smoke damage. Dan Slocum, Action 4 in downtown Oklahoma City. Seventy-four-year-old Les Jones has spent his entire life in northeastern Oklahoma. Jones lives across the road from the area lawmen first began searching for the suspect. His feelings about the incident reflect the attitude of most people living in and around Sepulpa. Seen a lot of uh, patrol cars going by, and then uh, and I seen they were uh, uh, gathering up down here close by. See, uh, we don't need people like that running loose in the community, and. Uh, that's just my personal feeling that uh, clean up things like this. The initial shock of yesterday's shooting hasn't worn off this community of 16,000 people, but they have recovered enough to begin a trust fund for the slain officer's family at a local bank. A family friend says the response from the community has been good. We went to school together, his wife and I, and they just, Kathy Watson, came to the bank and asked if we, they could set up a trust fund in the bank of course it is, and they, we've had a tremendous response. People have been calling and wiring money and just, just real good. And it means a lot to Marianne, I know. The deed is done, and a suspect is in custody awaiting trial. But the memory of yesterday's tragedy will remain with this northeastern Oklahoma community for years to come. Kevin Ogle, Action 4, in Sepulpa. There are only about 12 new cars sitting on the lot of an Oklahoma City Datsun dealership. Just down the road, the Toyota lot doesn't look any better. That's only about a week's supply. Both lots would like to have about a 60-day supply. That isn't likely. Voluntary import restrictions have cut the supply of foreign cars in the U.S., while a strengthening economy has bolstered the demand. If you don't have anything to sell, it's rather difficult to sell. Uh, this morning, we had a total of 12 cars and trucks total to sell today. Uh, the import business is really, uh, it's been good for many, many years, and uh, we don't know how good it is because we don't have the merchandise to get a feel on it. Many import car dealers really don't want to think about spending another year with those trade restrictions, but they don't think they have to worry about that. They think those restrictions could be lifted next year. Other dealers, though, say that next year is an election year, and they think those restrictions will stay in line. Charles Schnitzer, Action 4. A good number of the ladies out in this part of town have to work for a living and support small children. It's extremely difficult for them to get the necessary vaccinations for the children to get in school. And it was precisely with a view to meeting that need uh, that we started this. So that left us with the option of doing um, Saturdays or sometime in the evening. The doctors work hard all day. They really want their Saturdays off. 
and we had much better time getting uh, physicians in the evening. Jason, Joshua, and Joe have been gone all summer. They may never come home. Mary Fuller allowed her three boys to live with their father in Washington State this summer. Now she can't get them back. Mary received legal custody of the children after her divorce last winter. But no policeman, no district attorney, no judge will force the father to return the children. Mary Fuller will have to pay $400 and travel to Washington to regain custody of her own kids. Well, you feel a little emptiness. Uh, we went out to the fair and it, and it felt terrible seeing all these people with their children and you're ch you know that your children are gone and you don't know what they're doing at that time or if they're enjoying themselves. It just, you just feel very empty. We consider the child to be the primary victim and our primary client. Um, of course, the victim is the friends and the family of, that the child has lost, the custodial parent and the aunts and the uncles and the cousins. So there are a lot of victims in one of these crimes, but the, the person more damaged is the child. Dean O'Donnell tries to help people like Mary Fuller get their kids back. She helps the parents gather the proper legal papers and contact the proper authorities. But usually, the grieving parent is reduced to ransoming the abducted child. If you would like to help Mary Fuller or have information about a missing child, contact Oklahoma's Abducted Children at 842-7293. The organization has helped more than 100 parents who faced similar situations. Scott Wallace, Action 4. We're ready to go, aren't we, Sam, huh? We ready, Sam? You stay right there, Sam. You stay. That's a good dog. Gets to go all the time now, don't you, Sam? Boy, you just stay home with Mama. Now you get to go all the time. All right, let me grab a hold of your paw and show them how we do this. Here we go. We're fixing to go in gear now. The Oklahoma City Council called a special meeting today to discuss how it would spend an additional $40 million a year. That money would come from a penny sales tax increase if city voters approved. Officials basically agreed streets and sewer lines were the two areas where extra revenue is needed. But the real question was, should the people decide on what projects they wanted to tackle, or should council members? And we just say, hey, we're going to follow its advisory, or we're going to follow your advice. These are the ones we think we ought to be building. You tell us which ones you want to approve that we build. We appropriate $170 million a year down here. Just the nine of us. We go out there and campaign and appropriate $170 million a year into all sorts of diverse, different places. I mean, some places that after seven years, I still can't find them all. <laughs> but they're here. <laughs> but suddenly we can't be trusted to appropriate the $40 million worth of capital improvements projects. The vote on the proposed sales tax increase could come as early as November 22nd. Council members would like to see the tax imposed for at least 10 years. But first, Oklahoma City residents must make up their minds whether they want to be taxed more starting next year. Ed Stewart, Action 4.